really no such thing as a social media emergency. Something can always mm-hmm. wait. Um, I don't know if I would agree with you there. Maybe not true. So I'll start. I think that this is a really great article. I love this. I mean, and I'm not just saying that because Jess is my boss. Wait, I think- that's not icebreaker material. You're already I'm jumping into there. the article. Elizabeth, let her get the intro. Let me get in. Jeez. So- that was a killer intro, Miles. Way to kill yes, it. Thank you. <laughs> um, I love this article and not just because Jess is my boss, but I think it really had me thinking about my last vacation and how well I've been unplugging. I can say for sure that in this job, I've done a significantly better job unplugging than I have in other jobs. Let me just tell a horrible story. So when I used to be the social media manager for an unnamed army unit, um, I remember like being out on the 4th of July at like 12 o'clock and having our social media blowing up and I don't even remember what it was about, but there was a whole bunch of something. And I remember immediately being like, I have to get to a point where I can respond to this. And I had to handle the entire thing. So from like 12 to 1 a.m. on the 4th of July, I was working. And so I think that's just like a prime example of, first off, that was not responsible (laughs) of myself or the company, that there was no plan, like nobody else had taken over. We didn't have like shifts or anything. Also, was it necessary? For me to even do that. You know, Katie, you handle social media. You have to understand where I'm coming from, where you just feel like there's no way to unplug. Yeah. I have a a similar story with a with a previous company. I was going out for one of my big vacations of the year. And I had taken a whole week off and I'd let my manager at the time know that I was gonna be somewhere that didn't really have great service. And I think I was three days into the trip with a big group of my friends and I got a text message from an unknown number and it was my boss who had grabbed my cell phone number from HR and just was, there was this post, it went up and it's not right and the photo wasn't edited correctly and it was just not uh, something that really needed to be dealt with at that moment. And I think there, like you were saying, there's kind of that boundary of, does this need to be handled in this moment? Is there someone that can handle it that's not you. But yeah, I think in social media, there's always that attitude of this has to be handled right now. And I always say there's really no such thing as a social media emergency. Something can always Mm -hmm. wait. Um, I don't know if I'd agree with you there. there (laughs) Uh, Maybe not true. But for the most part, you know, I think there's a time when things can be allocated to other members Everyone usually has access to those accounts. So I think it's just creating that boundary and knowing like if something does go wrong, do we need to bother someone on vacation? And usually yeah. the answer is no. No. Yeah. What about you, Miles? Are you are you so stellar at setting and enforcing your work boundaries? Yes. <laughs> um, um, there's no. Not at all. Actually, the first thing I do is give my supervisor my phone number um to go on vacation because i'm like it's you know something could happen i could easily just log in um it comes from working in environments where that was the precedent set Mm -hmm. um so when i read jess's article it was really insightful to find some ways to deal with that Mm -hmm. and to kind of grow as a employee really yeah that's what it came down to as a contributor and just to kind of take care of self um and then you know, enjoy um, time off because then I could get back to it and, and not be burnt out. So, yeah. so yeah. Should we, should we dive in? Let's go to the, the first one, man. And I, I recorded this this morning and I messaged Jess and I was like, I'm adding this to my morning affirmations because there's just so many good nuggets here. So I think if we go to the first point, this one seems really obvious, but I think that Jess had hits on a few things that are important. So it's not just about letting people know, but also reminding them, you know, when you have your one-on-ones or team meetings or planning. And I think one thing that she's getting at here is eliminating that shame, like you shouldn't be taking time off. 
and instead just being really open about it so the team can plan, right? Because it's not, I mean, it's a part of your responsibility to, to plan what you do, like what's going on with your job responsibilities when you're gone, but it's also your teammates' responsibilities if they're taking that responsibility while you're gone to plan for how they're going to do it, you know? Yeah, I agree. I think um, our team does a really great job. You know, we have a shared marketing calendar that's designated for just time off. So you can go into, you know, five, six weeks out and see who's not going to be here. And I think it's, it it creates a a nice balance of, you know, Mm -hmm. scheduling out meetings and understanding what needs to be priority because someone's going to be out for a week. And just having that transparency and that visibility within the team, I've loved it. I haven't had that historically in other companies I've worked for, but I think our team does a great job of knowing when people are going to be out. Absolutely. Miles? Um, Yeah, sorry about that. Um, Yeah, the calendar is great. We need more calendars. Uh, I think that... um, it's also important, um, you know, you'll go to a meeting and you'll think, I shouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's, it's, it comes from a little bit of a historic, like, you know, the more you work, the, the, the better you look. And so, yeah, yeah. completely agree with this. Um, let everyone know, because I think they're just as appreciative of the fact that you're going on vacation and they want to share, you know, stories that you're going to have on your vacation, um, you know, so that their work day is brightened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then just being able to adjust meetings. I think that's one thing. You know, we had a meeting with Tim. I think it was one of our uh, analytics meetings. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be here, but you guys can have the meeting without me. And then that discussion was like, well, I mean, having you there is critical. So we'll just push it. And I just, I love that. Oh, man. This one, I have to say, is one of my favorites. I think that it's so important to discuss what are and aren't emergencies. And just to have have that shared understanding, right? That's really important. A shared understanding of what constitutes an emergency and what doesn't, and then creating sort of a, a little plan of action. You know, like if there's going to be a big launch or something, or if you have social posts going up, if there's anything like that, you make a plan of if this happens, then what? And coming from my military background, we call it a pace plan, the primary alternate contingency and emergency. And the reality is there should be like three steps before it becomes an emergency and somebody has to call you. But like, I just don't think that we do a good job of planning that. What do you guys think? I think, um, I think we need to, I think Elizabeth, you need to knock us into shape with the military planning (laughs) side of this. Like, I think there's a lot of great lessons, great nuggets there. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Let's do that. Um, But yeah, the, you know, it's gone are the days of uh, one social post going awry and a million dislikes coming through the door or an email going out and it's going to change somebody's life all of a sudden, you know, that we're so inundated all of the time with so many things that it's, it's not, you know, we, we, you know, since COVID really, we've found a way to put more value on our, precious time and and our energy and our and ourselves so yeah um let's go down the next one let's check out what's what else is going on with the article um declare your inbox what do you think about that katie i'm the worst i actually have the worst inbox known to man i have no folders it is just the wild west so this is advice that kind of hits home for me because I find myself logging back in exactly like Jess is saying in this article, and it's just taking hours to sort through things. And I know if I could just organize a little bit better, then I can prioritize. Um, But yeah, I'm not the person to ask because my inbox is disgusting at all times. This is just good life advice all the time, you know, and and when she originally wrote this too, I was like, well, let's not have them. Let's, let's not encourage people to unsubscribe from us. Like we still want them to read our stuff. But I think the key is being able to create folders so you can like circle back and catch up on news that you missed. But separating, you know, like I subscribe to several newsletters 
that have my daily reads, but I don't need to see that right away. And if I don't put it in a folder, I'm going to just delete all of them as opposed to like really seeing what's important. And I have folders, but I don't really know how to use them. And so they just exist. And so now things just get booked. I don't know. I, it, it's a work in progress, but obviously Jess needs to teach a master class on this. Done. We're going to yeah. get Jess on the line. Now. You know what's <laughs> funny? I, I will say I used to be, I don't know, maybe three years ago, inbox obsessed. So mm -hmm. even though right now I say that it's my worst trait, I used to be, if an email comes in, I have to open it. I have to see it. And I noticed that when I was not working or at nighttime, if I got a notification, just seeing that little notification or like the symbol on my phone that I have one email, like it needs to be off my home screen. Yes. I noticed that that was just a really bad uh, time. And I was just so focused on that, that no. I think something clicked in my brain and I think I've gone too far the other path, but now I just don't let emails stress me out. I was going to show you my phone right. and it's got like, um, it's like 506 like email messages waiting, no. uh, but that's from multiple that. accounts. That's, <laughs> so that's not, your, it's not your work email though, Miles, right? That's oh, totally yeah, just the, personal. That's <laughs> completely answered all of the time. And I don't I just press the archive button sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I'm the same way. I have to read all my notifications and I actually have multiple accounts too. Like I have my junk email, my business email, my work email. And then I have like a family email with my husband and he has on his email over 10,000 unread emails <laughs> so much so that he's like, I'm not going to go through this and just created a whole nother account. And like that to me, Katie, yeah, like that stresses me out. I can't, I check my, I check all of my emails in the morning and at night. And I'm not good about it because I do check them while I'm on vacation too. Well, but okay. I think well, we got to work on that I know. <laughs> as we're talking about. There's, there's a good tip because later on she talks about pausing notifications. And I think that's where I need to do it. There you but go. This is, this is a good one too. I love, I think this really applies to women too, is she talks about how her away messages used to be basically apologizing. And I thought, oh my God, how true is that? Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm so sorry. I'm out of office. I had a family emergency. I'm going to be in Wisconsin for two weeks. If you need to contact me, here's my cell phone number. Here's my personal email. And here's my boss. And she's like, stop. Don't do that. First off, you don't need to tell them where you're going or what you're doing. You don't need to apologize for taking time off, you know, and you yeah. certainly don't have to put out your cell phone number for so-called emergencies instead just put a point of contact for who's going to be there while you're gone period yeah. and if it is an actual emergency they'll follow the pace plan and if they need to then they can contact you yeah i don't know if y'all have ever seen um tim's notification for this it's the best in the whole wide world um but basically he cracks a joke um you know a light joke that just says hey i'm out of office you know, I'm enjoying the woods. This is great. Um, so I highly recommend scanning your inbox for those messages. They're, they're um, charms. Um, they're, yeah. they're, they're really lovely. <laughs> so anyway, um, you said there was one down here that you've applied to you, right? I think it was, it wasn't this one. So here, let's no. cover this one first. Yeah. While we're here. Uh, think twice before canceling your plans. Oh my gosh. This is a, this is a good one. Cause this is, I've seen this happen time and time again and where someone's like, oh, well, this this event's coming up. I'll just cancel. I'll just – and what happens is you just never do it, right? You never reschedule because there's always something. Work never stops. You know, it, it does – and it's, in, it's not supposed to. You're not supposed to just have an end to your work. But if you don't prioritize vacation, your personal life suffers. And when your personal life suffers, your work life suffers. And – I don't know. Have you guys ever done this? Canceled? I'm actually curious to know too. I, I don't think I have. I don't really? think I, I've definitely like canceled big plan, like plans over time. I don't think it was for work though. Um, but I, I have. Think, yeah. Well, I mean, I was in the military is a totally different world, but I mean, oh, there true. were, 
like a few years where I just was the lowest person on the totem pole. And so when there was vacation time that everybody took and somebody had to stay back, I stayed back. And so I missed Christmas at home for like two years, uh, Thanksgiving, birthdays. I mean, there's all sorts of things that, Mm -hmm. you know, somebody had to be on call or we had a field exercise. Some of those things were legitimate where somebody had to stay and it was me. And some of them were not, you know, like, I mean, I had, I had people that worked for me. I had soldiers that would like cancel surgeries so they could go to the field. And I'm like, you're, you're literally going to fall apart. And, but that just, I like the culture. I like the line here. Like you deserve time to take time off, like highlighted, bolded. Um, Because also like, you know, the next sentence is because it's good for you and healthy. Um, And so Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, okay, you've got that Christmas plan or Thanksgiving or other holidays that you celebrate, you Mm -hmm. know, you, you've talked about it with your manager, supervisor, do it, (laughs) Um, you know, find a way to make it happen because I think, you know, your, you know, mental well-being comes first. Um, And I think it's really important and it just leads to better work um, ultimately. So I think this is interesting. I, I don't personally think I've ever canceled any plans for work. I, I've always had a really good work-life balance. I've seen the importance of it. I think there's a lot of people in my life who don't have that. And I see the toll it takes on not, not only themselves, but the other relationships in their lives. Yeah. You know, as you, you know, you get older, you start to realize that your schedule affects more and more people. And I think when you don't prioritize healthy work-life balance, that really takes a toll on everyone else around you well and katie you're gen z right i think i was i'm a 97 baby so yeah you're gen z that's why you're better do people (laughs) say how old they are in the corporate world i don't know but yeah i'm like right on the cusp and so it's really interesting for me i have never had that and and we talked about this a little earlier and it's in jess's article but that mentality of like i'm from the hustle culture yeah. and work is everything and i'm going to give 60 hours a week even though is unnecessary has never been something that's come naturally to me i've never been someone to have my notifications on when i'm out on vacation or taking time off so it is really interesting to hear from people and hear the other you know side of things of work is all consuming it's it's really um i'm so happy for you katie like (laughs) yeah i I I, I want to be like that i think jess i mean it just says in her article you know she's a she's a millennial and it's it's like being a recovering addict when you define your entire self-worth and personality surrounding your work Mm -hmm. you know i had this conversation with someone recently where I was like, oh, yeah, but your job's not your identity. And they were like, yes, it is. It is. it is. It's my whole identity. I'm like, well, you know, when you're done with that job or you move on, like it's going to hurt because mm-hmm. you're not going to have your – you're not going to have a personal life. Yeah, and I think even in social media, I mean, we've all seen – we've talked about it. We're all working within the world of social, you know, that that new trend of quiet quitting, which mm. has nothing to do with quitting really, but it's everything to do with – you know, I'm, I'm here and I'm paid to work a nine to five. So you're not going to really be able to get a hold of me at eight and you're probably not going to get a hold of me at seven if it's an emergency, of course, but you know, there's a life that's lived outside of work hours and everyone has one. And I think if you can appreciate your boss's time and if you can appreciate people under you, it's just a cycle. And that I'm going to be honest, I think at our company, we, we do a really good job with that, at least within our department. Everyone respects yeah. everyone's time. And I think there's a lot of freedom um, and everyone gets their work done when it needs to get done. Or we have calls to address when we're not going to be in office. So, yeah. And yeah. I love my job. Oh, my gosh. I, I, Next- I'll call Jess every single day. I'll work here until I die. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I am so happy. <laughs> Next article, Elizabeth, is I survived the hustle culture of my, <laughs> my age group. Oh my God. That's a real thing. Like so, um, Miles, I'm kind of curious because we joke, you're notorious 
for being able to send a message when you're out of town. You know, we always joke right before vacation, like, Miles, turn your phone off. Um, <laughs> and most of the time we're good about that. But where do you feel like that stems from? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I... <laughs> Um, yeah. When I was five years old, <laughs> you on the I hot seat, real quick. I know. I would love to go really deep on that hot seat, but um, it just comes from um, a little bit of like my just work at, at like period in society, uh, working as hard as you can for you know goals, and then growing up like you know I'm male, being fed you know Gary Vaynerchuk articles and yeah. some Paris articles and things that like say. The more, you know, you succeed, the more you try in life, the more you succeed. And I've had to like deprogram that out of myself. Now I have yeah. found very like livable ways around that. So like, for example, like, you know, I do not hesitate to go take a walk around the block midday during my work day. Like, and mm -hmm. so yes, I'll respond to a 7 p.m. text, like, because I've, you know, taken a 30 minute walk that make clears my head. Like, you know, yeah. there, there are ways that I combat that, that are like inher innately programmed into me that like are hard to shake, but like, are like, I will trade off this um, peace of mind for that peace of mind, right? And so, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I also, I came from an industry that worked through the weekend as well. So that'd be prior to this. And so for me, like I'm, when everyone turns off on Saturday and Sunday in our industry, it's, it's, just, it's amazing to me. It's like this weird celebratory, like, I don't know what's happening, um, you know, magical world that t I didn't know exists. So. Oh my gosh. Anyway, Talking about our happening. old jobs is like, like a little therapy PTSD session. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, let's you, have that. I, I say... love that. Let's, let's get the dirty out there. <laughs> the both yeah. of you have lived some really interesting uh, lives in your careers and it's taken you to some really cool and, and unique places in terms of where you guys have worked which so. we, we yeah. all have in a way I think we all yeah. have our we all have our little narrative and story which is real fun so. but I'm happy to um, be here and I yeah. think that is such a great point to bring us to six I feel like we've done a good job of talking about this but one thing that Jess says here about holding boundaries is it's not just it's not just about you. And and that sounds really weird because it's holding your boundaries, but it's also about setting the standard for your teammates. And if you're a manager for the people working for you, because if you say, I'm not going to respond to messages um, while I'm on vacation, and then somebody pings you about something super silly and you immediately respond, you've now set the precedent that that's not true you can always be reached. You will always respond. And your time and your vacation is not more important than work. And I think, whoa, talk about getting in a really important deep meaning there is setting the precedent for everyone. Hey, when I say I'm taking time off, I'm taking time off. And when you take time off, you should unplug too. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Yeah, and I think this one's pretty sorry to cut you off katie um, i think this one's fairly self-explanatory and, and really just it's it's hard to, it's it's one of those also like um i, I remember so growing up and hearing know. it's hard to say no and like learning to say no in our work life is um uh, it's really important so just ignoring sometimes i think that's key is like just ignoring i told my sister who has a really really hard time stepping back and while she was on uh, maternity leave and was really struggling, I said, give them two hours. Because most of the time, if you don't respond right away, everybody's going to start spinning and they'll figure it out. And I was like, if they still need help in two hours, then respond. Mm -hmm. But just give them that two hours of waiting to figure it out on their own. And every single time they solved it on their own. I think that's a great point, Elizabeth. I think when people are reaching out, and they know someone might be out of office, it usually comes from a, a moment of panic. And not that they mean to, but it's usually like, I don't know how to address this situation in the moment. Um, I think it actually gives some freedom for people to learn how to deal with it themselves. And I don't know, fend for yourself a little. It's good for them. I mean, you never know what could happen. Tomorrow, you know, you could break a leg and be in the hospital and we'll have to figure it out. You know, mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, we will, you know, no one should, no one should be so indispensable that the entire company collapses when they're gone for a day. 
that's just yeah. bad management. Yeah. Oh, okay. The last one. This one's really good. I did not do this when I came back from my last vacation and I regretted it deeply, which is a catch up day. You know, having setting a ha- setting aside like half a day or an entire day just to catch up, getting updated on projects, checking your emails, reading chats, and then that way you can get all caught up on everything and then jump in at full speed. And this is really important. Her note here, super important. Do not, do not, do not schedule a catch-up day while you're still on vacation. It defeats the purpose. Have you guys ever scheduled a catch-up day? No, but it's brilliant. I come back and it's just from nine to five meetings, meetings, meetings. And I don't really have any time to actually do work. It's just, you know, retaining all the new information that I missed. Mm -hmm. No, but I think that's a really brilliant idea. But I think it's also about having it, you know, within yourself to cancel meetings with people and saying, hey, I need this time to catch up. I don't think a lot of people want to say no to their peers. Yeah. So. Or just rescheduling. Hey, can we push Mm -hmm. this till tomorrow? I mean, we reschedule things all the time for a million reasons. And why not this? Mm Mm-hmm. Miles, have you? I agree. I know I 100% agree. I, I, I tend to, I like um, my favorite kind of holidays are, you know, leading into Monday. And then, you know, again, spacing out meetings and things um, throughout the week so that, you know, I think it's said succinctly by um, uh, Carol, which is just, you know, we're not curing cancer necessarily here. Yeah. Like we can do this in due time and we can um, solve it well. So, yeah. All right. I want to read these like slowly and for impact because I think that we, we all need to hear it. This is a part of my morning affirmations now. <laughs> I am a human, not a robot. Like all humans, I need time to rest and recharge my mind and body. When I'm rested, I feel better, I do better, and I perform better in all aspects of my life. I just feel better. I love it. It. Good job. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. That's a so. sneak preview of her audio. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go to the website to hear the vlog. Join us next week on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I think this is a great article. If you haven't read it yet, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Definitely, uh, where I think can we all need to read it before. The audience finish. find it? Oh, <laughs> it is on aquintalent.com. Boom, boom. If you go to the top, you can go over to resources. And from resources, you'll find the blog. And you can either search for it by Jess Gross, who wrote the article, or you can just find it scrolling through the page and reading the blog. So, Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this, and we hope to see you next time. Thanks, Anne.